In the high stakes arena of competitive siege, one team stands at the precipice of greatness, BDS. A squad heralded as the best in the world, brimming with unparalleled talent and extraordinary team play. They are a force of nature, an unstoppable juggernaut, and at their helm stands the legendary Shaiko, a name which strikes fear and awe into the hearts of the opposition. Yet, Siege is a game where even the best can be outwitted by brilliant strategy. Enter PSG Talon, a team that has never made waves until now. With the greatest coach in Siege history at the helm, they stand ready to challenge the Giants. Can these Korean underdogs defy the odds and pull off a stunning upset against one of the most formidable teams the game has ever seen? Or will the juggernaut of BDS prove too much for them to handle? PSG start off defending Basement on Oregon. This site is brutal to attack, with defenders able to play crossfires on every single choke into sight. Usually there are only two ways for the attack to win, either by getting picks in the roam clear early round or using tons of execute utility as they hit the site. PSG aren't roaming, opting to bring a ton of stall and plant denial instead. BDS recognize this and do an excellent job of bringing the tools they need for the job. With Twitch and Capital for smokes and Grim to force players back from power positions, they have everything they need to deal with this sort of defense. The one thing PSG have on their side is time. Because of all the stall they've brought, if BDS take too long to set up their execute, PSG will be able to deny them from planting. This will force BDS to go deep and take fights on site, making the round exponentially harder. BDS are crazy quick though, and they take control of the entire map within 30 seconds. This is good for them, but they still need to start setting up for their execute. PSG have so much stall that even a small delay could be disastrous for BDS. What his movements were going to be, but I think of nothing else. He doesn't want to go charging in here and dying for no reason when his team is still getting set up elsewhere around the map. And that's exactly what they're going for here. The E-Box hatch being opened up. Once they get the electrification down, it will force BDS to have to step in and really push in for the scrap on that one. You're looking maybe in towards Solotop here to help deal with this now. They've got one of those um, tin openers left in back pocket. Small delays like that. A really good read from Royboy shuts down BDS's attempt at the hatch. This may not seem so bad since Shaiko has already walked down Freeze, but it's a problem for the next step in the round. BDS were planning to use the open hatch to shoot fire with Capitao to deny Highway from being played. Since the hatch stays closed, it becomes much harder for BDS to walk up. With their plan A being shut down, BDS stack two Freeze and two Main, aiming to trade each other out as they walk up. But with all the crossfires and stall on side for PSG, there's no chance BDS can win the round. Now start looking at is what the execute looks like, but it's going to be explosive, Tim. Shaiko knows that JLT's there, but oh, ooh, uncharacteristic yeah. from Shaiko. Missing a couple of shots there. Did have the opportunity to take the Goyo out as he was forced to move by that asphyxiation ball, but couldn't find it. Leaker pack, however, does come in. Pick up Roy oh, Boy. Shaiko gets one. Solotov in on the action as well. Three versus one now all of a sudden. Solotov, Shaiko, close things out. Fair enough. Sometimes super team is gonna super team. BDS walk in and kill everybody in a round, they were super unfavored to win. PSG are playing a top floor defense, extending pretty much everywhere they can. They have a setup for trophy, closet, and security, giving them a bit of a buffer before the site, which they can fight for early round, forcing the attack to burn time and utility before backing off to fight on the site itself late round. Again, PSG's win condition is focused on them bleeding out the time and forcing BDS to hit the site late, turning the clock into a sixth man on the side of the defense. BDS know this, so they set some drones in the pre-round to gain info on the PSG setup. And look at this, Bride has managed to sneak a drone inside of Closet. BDS have perfect info on Royboy, and they quickly work to isolate the pick. Kills from that game's window in the first 10-15 seconds of the round, guaranteed. I Mishoko's mean, an absolute pro, spraying through softballs and finding people, and Solotov's about to get a freebie here, Royboy! Paying the price of being caught out. Beautifully played by BDS, as they secure themselves a man advantage. And look, they've already ID'd another player isolated in security. This round could rapidly spiral out of control for PSG. Paying the price of being caught out, they just knew where he was and he's got nothing to say about that. Blasted out from below. Maybe a little bit of a silly death to take in the same way you could argue the same about the Goyo in the previous round. Nice shot from Ryder. Really well done by Ryder. Just in time, he realizes he's about to be pinched and manages to get away. On top of this, he finds Likefak attempting to cut him off. He gets the kill, equalizing the round. 
This is great for PSG and flips the round from losing to pretty even. Both teams can win right now. The round is going to come down to who can make the next play. BDS's execute idea is to clear below with the buck in order to work vert in kids. By denying the defense from playing in kids, they allow themselves to jump in big window and go for a plant behind bunks. This is a really strong strategy for when you see the defense is extending a lot of util towards master, but you still need to force the player out of kids and BDS in very uncharacteristic fashion decide to cut a corner. Instead of taking the time to buck below, they start to spam flashes at the player and kids. In theory, this achieves the same result as forcing the player back with the buck, but remember what I said at the start of the video. Siege, Siege is a game, game where, where even, even the, the best, best can be outwitted, outwitted by brilliant, brilliant strategy. PSG have the perfect player in the perfect spot to shut down BDS's whole push. And if there was a player to win the round, it would be Misa. Am I about to get skeleton keys from below? That's perpetually going to be a worry, but the warden here planted inside of kids has done enough. Two quick kills come through for Talon. They hold firm against the push coming in from BDS. And I guess Solotov is still hunting from below here, but a little bit out of sync maybe with the rest of his team. Leaves it all down to him and Yuzu's two former Eminem players to get this one done. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, I, a little bit concerned about that push there. Just going in, I think, trying to get oh. aggressive. Um, this has surely got to be another kill for Zolotov here. He sees uh, wow, oh, fair play. PSG are back playing their basement defense, but with a completely different strategy. They lost in the flood last time, so this time they opt to waste more time and utility in the early round by setting up a security extension. They bring the mute and the clash to make droning and clearing the position a living hell for the attack, forcing them to use hard breach, EMPs, and vert play to force the players back. It takes BDS a full minute and a half to do this work. This is some next level play by PSG. They perfectly identified what went wrong in their defense last time and have adapted Adapted accordingly. Again, they've set themselves up with a better strategy to give themselves the best chance of winning the round. Now, BDS need to scramble. They start working quickly to open up the remaining hatches and prepare their execute. Last round, they forced frontside, but this time, against the Clash, that's just not gonna work. By simply standing in Freezer, Clash makes it impossible for attackers to close the gap and get to cover front Freezer. BDS know this and make the call to flip the take backside, but this still plays into PSG's hands. Because BDS wasted so much time getting Freezer and security control, they now have to execute without taking the time to clear out utility. Now, the Fenrir mines and bulletproof cam on the side of PSG are going to prove very problematic. Looking to get aggressive on rear stage. PSD Chowon looking quite happy to take a couple of fights on. And they're also have information here, Tim. Now, when you're attacking in the basement, you know the key locations players will be in, so it's not like they're going in completely blind here, but they are going to lack the ability to catch players moving on flanks, for example. Solotov going well for himself so far. I believe that's his second entry in just the last couple of rounds. So starting out well, a second kill being rolled through as well. Or not. A super team is as super team does. And now, with the 5v3 advantage and all the control they'll need, BDS should surely close out this round, right? More back to the sort of form that we remember from the M&M days, Tim. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as I said, Solotov, last time we saw him online in Copenhagen, had a fantastic tournament um, and certainly looking to repeat that for Misa. Does manage I'm... to take the shield off and find users. JLT onto Shaiko as well. 3v3 breeders. Shot. Don't stick this plant though. BDS have got the cover that they need. Two versus two. But one of those that shield is up, a man. clash. Can get in there, start bullying these BDS players. And he gives so much information now that JLT should have some free fights to be able to take out. Mies has got... What? How is Mies have won that against Reday? And he's in a spot as well where Leaky Fat's coming around, but Misa goes nuclear! What even just happened? Misa played the round to perfect. Perfection. The awareness of this man is unbelievable. He knows that since PSG are down numbers, he needs to find a 1v1. He knows BDS are planting, but that if he tries to kill the planter, he'll just be immediately traded. Instead, he aims to take the fight with the cover, isolating a pick to bring down BDS's advantage. JLT does the same, completely ignoring BDS's plant and finding a kill on the lurker. Both of them know they can't win in the 5v3, so they need to work to equalize before attempting the retake. The bomb goes down in a 3v2. BDS have numbers and time on their side, but PSG have something else. Remember how BDS didn't have time to clear util earlier? Well, failing to do so is about to cause them some serious problems. PSG have a bulletproof cam watching pillar. They have full info on BDS, and off the calls from their teammates, they're about to do something magical. Misa knows Solotov is isolated, so he swings with info to punish Buck. Then, he puts up his shield to retake space, allowing both he and JLT to swing Bride in e-box. 
Liquefac is stuck outside of Bunker, unable to cover the plant, so he pushes in and gets sat down by Misa. Heroics and perfect play from him, leading to an important round for PSG. After two defensive round wins, PSG are forced to go to their offsite. They're playing traps to slow BDS down, which they're pairing with the Valk for info. PSG are aware that BDS are constantly attempting lurks, so the idea here is to use the Valk cams and goo mines to find solo players they can work together to isolate. BDS start by working to take top from master, with the idea of transitioning into a kitchen plant late round. They pair this with a lurk in from Garage off the back of the Brava from Solotov. He uses his drones to clear dread mines on his walk up, but this plays perfectly into PSG's hands. Remember, they want BDS to attempt a lurk, and as BDS start their main take up top, they start dumping new tilt to force PSG back. But PSG aren't playing for top, and they've read that the lurk is about to come. Solotov isn't ready for what's about to hit him. Big Fat's just going to be opening up that angle into the zones, make sure that he can't be peeked from that side. Does go in and looks to take a fight vertically, but getting hit with the f nat as well. A little bit too much pressure and gets forced out of there. Solotov with a goo mine in, but will be taken no out. Way. Meets the rider, PSG Talon, finding kill after kill there. PSG trades space for picks, giving themselves a two-man advantage, but allowing BDS to get established up top. This is once again strategically genius from them. They've ID'd a win condition for themselves and have worked together to capitalize on it. Now, they simply need to sit in corners and wait. By giving BDS space, they'll force the attack to execute, turning the round into a temporary 5v2 as they attempt the plan. This is really good by PSG and ends up causing BDS to waste a full minute. They drop into sight to plant and PSG spring into action on their retake. The discipline that's being shown here that's really critical you have no reason to go out there and go seeking kills or go swinging or get too aggressive. BDS are the ones who have got to make the play and make the play. They shout in. Brida has dropped in. That smoke not hitting him, narrowly just missing his backside there. And because they've got this top floor control, it's sort of the reverse. We mentioned about defending the site from above. It's the same in a post plan, but Shaiko has been taken down by Ryder. He don't care who it is. He'll beam them all at this point. Tim, a 2v4 in the post plan. BDS might just hold on to this though. There's two versus three as Yuzus manages to find one and he's keeping a hold of that vertical. The five Misa, mate. Misa again finds him, knows where the last oh, one is, what? but Breda somehow hits him with a turn and burn. However, the final kill comes in from Soldier. Round five was not a close affair. BDS snuck into sight and managed to get bombed down without PSG being aware. With players on repel and outside of the map, the retake is essentially impossible, giving BDS another attacking win. Round 6, they run their basement defense back, playing once again around the security extension. BDS this time decide to try to work more vert above security, aiming to secure a man advantage for themselves. They take bunks quickly and start applying pressure onto Royboy, but again, PSG strategically have an excellent read on what's going on. They have mute jammers placed all around security, making it impossible to drone. This forces an error from BDS, who assume with all the pressure from above, Royboy will have just fallen off. But Royboy has no intention of leaving, tucking deep in security, just daring BDS to step into his waiting arms. Well, normally you'll see players poking their head halfway up the stairs to get rid of a drone, but then immediately coming back down to site without having to go all the way from top of Big Tower down into the basement. Now, shaiko has been here before. Last time around, he had the clash on one side and the shotgun on the other. No need for that as such, as Royboy was sat a little bit further back. Forced errors. Shaiko walks right into Royboy. But this isn't just bad play from BDS. This mistake happens because of PSG. BDS have four drones left available, entirely because of the setup between Royboy and Misa. This, paired with the fact that it's crazy Royboy decided to stay, leads BDS to just assume that he must have dropped. But Royboy has balls of steel, and as BDS assume once again that he surely must have dropped, Royboy simply tucks deep in security and waits for another mistake. We're going to go down to basement again, and BDS have pushed Freezer hard every time, so this is what we're going to do. Get up to the top of stairs and get aggressive, what and it's Jesus. worked out for them. Users does pick up JLT, but Soldier is there with one of his own. Breed gone, and the Diffuser down, so that's going to create a little bit of a problem for oh, BDS boy, boy, with 20 boy. seconds left to go. Oh, Royboy takes the, the vertical the and shuts Users down as he tries to move through to Pillar, and now this clash gets more and more powerful as he's just going to waste more and more time. Five seconds left to go. Very little that BDS are 
this can do here? Roy Boy stayed in security, leading to him retaking meeting as BDS went for their execute. The Europeans have no idea and are picked apart from the hatch with nothing they can do to stop it. There's two halves to a game of Siege, and PSG still need to attack in order to win the game. And with how defender-sided Oregon is, the three rounds they need in order to close it out are by no means guaranteed. PSG are attacking dorms, and with the lineup they're bringing, there's no doubt what their plan is going to be. They're going to take Below into Kitchen, using the Deimos and the Buck to force BDS out of kids, while the Grim and the Nomad post up Big Window and spam Bs and Flashes to further force BDS back. At the same time, they'll use the Ace to apply back pressure through Closet, forcing BDS to turn part of their focus away from the plant going down. They start their take Small Tower side, getting control right away of everything up to Kitchen. At the same time, Royboy shoots open main door and starts applying pressure master. This is to keep BDS from immediately reading the goal of the attack, but it's also a risk. Royboy is alone, and if BDS figure that out, they can send players to punish his isolation. And look at this, Likefak is in classroom, and with the brunt of PSG coming small tower, he senses an opportunity to set his team up with an advantage for the rest of the round. Other than that, Likefak is also down in classroom, so could well be forced back, but he knows there's something oh, here. Oh man, he's this is so cheeky. No, he's looked the wrong way! He's gonna no, take no a ton way. of damage! Nitro goes out, surely not! Likefak <laughs> has to be dead here, what. and Roy Boy is gonna cut him down! Unlucky from Likefak, as he makes the wrong read. He assumed the ace would be on the balcony, but remember, Roy Boy's goal isn't to take space, so he's sitting further back to make sure he stays alive. PSG take the advantage, but they still need to convert. Bride is playing with the mute in security. With the shotgun on hand, this player is really tough to clear, and has the keys to winning the round. With holes below big window and a C4 in pocket, he can pretty easily shut down any attempt at a plant from PSG. PSG know this, but more importantly, they know BDS are expecting them to do something about it. But the thing about Bride's position is that it's only really good for stopping people jumping in big. If PSG were to, say, ignore him and just fight sight, Bride's power position starts to look a lot more like a prison than anything else. What they can really do is going through the single door, they're going into a shotgun, so it's going to be a difficult one. It's either that or PSG, PSG Talon just relocate oh. and push from the other side, but Ryder manages to find Solitov. The more space that they can create on site, the bigger problem Bride has here because he can't necessarily keep himself in that position then. Reloading. Bride's in a tough spot here as well, admittedly, because you know that they've just pushed up white stairs and got rid of one of your players. That's when you're meant to react. Was a little a bit late to the party in a sense here. He's got to make a move at some point, and now that engagements are going on, he may well do, but I think behind JLT, yes, someone else is waiting, and in behind as well! After the loss in round eight, BDS decide to try dorms one more time. This time, however, despite having nearly the exact same op lineup, the strat looks almost nothing alike. BDS are a team that excels at adaptation, and when they read something isn't working, they opt almost immediately to change it up. Last round, Bride was completely ignored inside security, leading to him being unable to have any impact on the round. This time, instead of turning security into a bunker, BDS make rotates around kitchen and stick the Legion and Valk down below. Likefak and Solotov are going to start here early to show presence and slow the attack down, but this isn't where they want to win the round. Their goal is to be a nuisance for a little bit, but to ultimately give up the space so they can rejoin their team and win the round later on. PSG, for their part, are trying a similar attack. They like their small tower over, so decide to try more of the same. Even so, they're still adapting too. Recognizing BDS are bringing the Mute and Valk, they decide to switch off the Deimos, knowing the Mute Jammers will reduce his impact, and bring the IQ to counter the Valk. Solotov posts up in dining to shoot a drone and fall off, but this may just be a little too ambitious. See, PSG have brought the Monty to help clear, making it impossible for Solotov to stay and fight. And with Misa posted up on the window outside white, he's completely cut off, with nowhere to go. Right. You know I love a surprise, I love to oh, be proven wrong. Uh, when everything follows expectations, it's a bit dull. It is. Misa again, <laughs> getting the entry onto Solotov, will somebody stop but him? With the opening on side, 
PSG now take their time to set up and surround site. They rotate the Monty with case to trophy, and the ace to open closet wall. This effectively forces every remaining member of BDS into the limited space kids and pit. But Likefak has slipped the net PSG of cast around site, and with perfect timing on the flank, he may just be able to win the round. Yesterday we were all saying, okay, if a BDS face tomorrow, I really feel for them. At the moment, if PSG win this one, that's suddenly upside down. Imagine coming into knowing you're playing against a BDS that's just lost to PSG Talon. You probably then start fancying your chances to bring them down, to be honest with you. Immediately there's one kill, but again, an answer back from the other side. What on earth has Fabian been feeding these guys? Bude hits the deck as well. Leak it back at least recovers one, and they should be able to get a 2v1 onto the Monty here. He's properly pinned in this corner, Tim, and my God, is he in trouble. If he gets away with anything here, it's going to be absolutely magic. Misa with it all to do. Misa is left in a 1v2. BDS are one of the best teams in the world at closing out rounds like this. They have the advantage, and they know how to set themselves up to trade. This should be a BDS round, but the way Misa has been playing, I wouldn't be so sure. If anyone can, it's gonna be him! Sure, lady. PFG Talon just didn't control the flanks well enough there. Leaker back really hurt them with that push-up armory stairs. They're both just gonna hold the positions now. He knows. He's giving away no Misa knows, surely. That's Dead. the kill that he needed to find. Leaker back hits the deck, keeps himself alive. I was going to say, he's got a couple of bees, yeah. 30 seconds left to go. He knows as well, he gets oh my god, he's got the close one. The last one, it's on his own! No way! No way!